Hello and what's up GSC Pokemon Challenges fam. How are you guys doing? Merry Christmas. We're back. I'm going to be busting out a bunch of these in the next few days. I think you guys are, you know, probably feeling a little frustrated. It hasn't come out quickly enough. Just hold up on that. We're going to bump up the pace quite a bit here. Just been busy with work and wrapping everything up for the end of the year, but now I got a bunch of holidays coming in. So we're going to get through this Faulkner section, I promise you. So today we've got 14 challengers, and they're pretty interesting 14 challengers for the Faulkner section because some of these Pokemon might struggle a lot. We're starting off with all of the Hitmons and their unevolved form, Tyroke, and... This could be terrible. <laughs> I mean, they could all get completely destroyed for all I know. Then we're going to come along with Lickitung. We might face Lickitung up against Teddy Ursa since we got some normal type action going. I think they'll be fine. But then we've got the coughing line. Not sure they're going to be good. The Rhyhorn line might get completely wrecked by mud slaps. We've got Shuckle. Shuckle is just kind of like one of those weird Pokemon in this section where I'm not sure how it's going to do. It's a tank, but it doesn't have any attack output. We might have to try struggle strats. Just saying. Then we've got Heracross, easily one of the top Pokemon in Gen 2, and yet it's going to probably get completely destroyed here, if I have to guess, because of its four times weakness to flying. Then we've got Sneasel, who I don't think gets a move set, based on everything that I can remember. So this could be a tough set. This might be one of our worst sets yet. I'm going to make some predictions. I'm going to predict that we can probably get through Falconer with him on Lee. I think we're just going to have enough attack output to get it done. Him on Chan is a little bit more of a question. I think that Lickitung, Teddy Ursa, and Ursaring are going to get through. I do not think Coughing gets through. I think Coughing is going to get wrecked. Weezing might be okay going to be kind of the same thing with the Rhyhorn Rhydon. Rhyhorn might not get through. We've seen some of these rock types like Onyx and uh, Geodude struggle here. So just kind of makes sense that that one's probably not going to get through, but Rhydon is way too powerful not to get through. Shuckle might need to go struggle strats, but in that case, it might win. Heracross is getting wrecked. I'm just calling it out. Heracross is getting wrecked. Sneasel, I'm really up in the air about. I don't think Tyrogue gets through. I'm not sure Hitmon Top gets through. But let's find out if I'm right. So if I'm predicting correctly, I'm going to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe eight of these 14 through. That's my prediction. Let's find out if it's true or not. Drop your predictions, of course, in the comments section. I always love to see them. It's always fun to find out if I'm right or wrong. <laughs> it's always good to record this in advance. I'm pulling the Madrai bread. This is all being recorded in advance. Comment down below and tell me if you think I can win. <laughs> Let's get it. Let's start with Hitmon Lee. Let's go. All right, so in Professor Elm's lab, I've decided to put Hitmon Lee in the total dial ball. We'll go up against Chikorita as we do this whole run. But let's get this Pokemon to see what our starting move set is. And we are starting with Double Kick. Double Kick only. In Gen 1, we would also have Meditate at the start of the game. I'm guessing that's going to possibly come in later. Let's see. We will get Meditate at level 6. So I do think we'll get it in time for it to actually matter against Faulkner's Gym. And of course, Pidgey and Pidgeotto are going to be neutrally affected by Double Kick. So this might just work out. But let's just test this out by first taking our Himonlee up against Rival one. I'm going to take off the berry because I don't think we need it in this fight, but let's just see if we can actually win the first attempt. So strategy is just to hold down A on double kick, of course. We are faster and that did about half. So yeah, two double kicks completely destroys Chikorita. Thank God that grass doesn't resist fighting, as I always thought in Gen 1. It's just because all the grass types were also poison types in Gen 1, though. So here we can come and just report the rival, I guess, to, to the police. We should have done that in Gen 1. We should have just said, this guy, this guy's doing something illegal. You should take him in. Then we wouldn't have even had to mess with the champion. Come on. There's a reason why in Gen 2, you don't have to fight the rival as a champion. It's because he's in jail. So let's check the tail of the tape as we get here into Faulkner's gym. 
We're coming in with a level six Hitmonlee. We just leveled up against Youngster Mikey, which means we got access to Meditate. Could be useful, we'll find out. We've got 23 HP. We are, of course, a pure fighting type. And uh, our stats, 21 attack, 13 defense, 11 special attack, 20 special defense, 17 speed. Here's the only issue I first see. We are going to be weak against Peck. And if Peck is just two-shotting us, even after the berry, then we're just getting wrecked here against Honest Abe. He is quite a few levels higher than us, so uh, yeah. I'm gonna give the berry and we're just gonna see if this will actually work out or not. <laughs> not super confident, but let's go. So Honest Abe time, and uh, yeah, I'm going to double kick. Look at the peck, it did 17 damage and we're down to six HP. So we get wrecked in two hits. Are you kidding me? Oh, what is this? Okay, there we have eight HP remaining. So maybe it's a range? Ah, oh, he gets a crit, come on. We might just have to get a certain range or we might need a critical hit here. Let's see. That one gets us down to seven HP remaining. So we get wrecked there. I think we need that range where we have 18 HP remaining and then to not get multiple hits that do more damage. Come on, Hitmonlee, I believe in you. You were the coolest Hitmon. Oh man, this, this Spiro is just like, I ain't having this. No, no Christmas presents for this one. Okay, we've got 18 HP remaining now. Oh, we survived with two HP, yes. Yes, we get to level seven, we beat Honest Abe. That took quite a few attempts, just saying. I don't think my attempts counter is working. I'm gonna have to fix that. Everything else seems to be working for the overlay, except the attempts, so we'll get that fixed. Don't worry. But here, for now, let's take on the God Rod. And uh, after the trouble that was Honest Abe, here, I think this one's just a cakewalk. Oh, look at this. Yes. Oh, yes. And we get to level eight right there, so we get the damage rounding threshold. Okay. We've made it to Faulkner with Hitmonlee, the best Hitmon. Let's check the stats. We're coming into Faulkner at level eight with 28 HP, same moveset, double kick and meditate. But now we've got 26 attack, 16 defense, 13 special attack, 25 special defense, 20 in, or 21 in speed. Of course, the specials don't matter in this fight, but uh, we're gonna give this berry and we're going to try to fight Faulkner. This might be painful, but we're gonna do it. Let's go, <laughs> let's go Faulkner. So this should be a case where he doesn't use Mud Slap, he should just tackle against us. I think I'm gonna use Meditate multiple times in order to boost my attack, because if we can just one-shot the Pidgeotto. Okay, so we heal with the berry there. We're just gonna one-shot Pidgey. And here we're outspeeding, yes, and we one-shot Pidgeotto. <laughs> we get to level nine. Oh, Hitmonlee, you absolute legend. This Pokemon actually could go pretty far in this challenge. Um, We're gonna have to see if we learn any good moves for the next section. We will get access to Swift, which is a 60 base power normal move and Mud Slap. The reason that that's an issue, but I think Swift might solve it. It's because of the fact that we're going to have to deal with Bugsy and Scyther is going to four times resist fighting. But if we can simply just set up all the meditates at the beginning of the fight, probably doesn't matter. We're also going to get rolling kick and maybe even jump kick at level 16. This could work out, guys. This could be a good Pokemon because we're going to completely crush Whitney. We've got Mud Slap to take out Ghastly. Okay, we're gonna save the game and now we're gonna take on the next of the Hitmons. Of course, it's time for Hitmon Chan. Can it do what Hitmon Lee just did? So I do have to say, I always felt that Hitmon Chan was the inferior Gen 1 Hitmon just because of the fact that it doesn't learn any good fighting type moves and the elemental punches are kind of trash. At least they were in Gen 1 because special was all one stat and wasn't like Hitmon Chan had great special. Gen 2, they decided to give these really good special defense. But we can see, even on Hitmonlee, the defense stat isn't that great. But we're just gonna have to see, I guess, if Hitmonchan gets enough good moves. It does learn Mach Punch later on, for example, that it could be decent. So here we're picking up Hitmonchan. It's also in the Toto Dial Ball. What is the move set? It just knows Comet Punch. So once again, we're gonna take on the rival, but 
I'm not sure if Hitmonchan's gonna do as well, because Comet Punch just hits a random number of times between two and five times, and it's an 18 base power normal move. So we don't even get the same type attack bonus. I'm gonna take off the berry just in case, but let's see if we can even beat Rival 1 here reliably. So we're just gonna hold down A on Comet Punch and miss turn one. And now our Comet Punch is doing very little damage. We do seem to be winning the damage race, so we should win this one, but that was nowhere near as consistent as the fight with Hitmonlee. Hitmonlee, two hitter, and it's done. When we also add in that this Pokemon is going to be weak against flying, this just might not work. <laughs> this really just might not work. So I'm a little nervous now. I'm I'm not super excited about Hitmonchan. <laughs> like it's clear just on these early fights that we're not doing nearly as much damage as Hitmonlee. And like these were one hitters here for Hitmonlee and it took two turns on both of Youngster Mikey's Pokemon. And the only move we're gonna learn in this section is agility. And while agility is nice because it will let us out speed, we're not gonna learn that until after Honest Dave anyway. And it's not like it boosts our damage output. So here we are, we have made it to Faulkner's Gym. We're going to give Hitmonchan a berry. It definitely needs it. We're coming in with 23 HP at level six. We've only got Comet Punch and sorry, let's check the stats. We've got 19 attack, 16 defense, 11 special attack, 20 special defense, 16 speed. We do have slightly more defense than Hitmonlee had. I'm just not sure it matters with the type disadvantage, but let's see. On the stave time, and uh, that Spiro is scary. So here he knocks us down to 11 HP. We hit four times there, and then he critical hits me. We might need five hit ranges from Comet Punch, and there's nothing to do. We just have to hold down A and pray that Comet Punch will do enough. Yeah, yeah, this is bad, 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 bad. Like it would be one thing if Comet Punch was a fighting type move and thus would do extra damage for the same type attack bonus. Then we'd probably get through this pretty easily. Come on, come on, Hitmonchan. Double five hit Comet Punch. Okay, there's the first five hitter. There we go, oh yes, yes. It only took eight minutes <laughs> to get through Honest Dave. We level up and learn agility, good job. Good job, Hitmonchan. I always believed in you. <laughs> so here, let's save the game. Let's take on this guy, the God Rod. So here, this should be a lot easier because the Pidgeys don't have a super effective move. So Tackle just basically does nothing. There we go. So we get through, we get to level eight against the God Rod. So going into Faulkner, let's check the tail of the tape for our punchy little Hitmonchan. We're level eight, 28 HP. It's the same as Hitmonlee, but now we've got Comet Punch and Agility. We've got 24 attack, 20 defense, 13 special attack, 25 special defense, 19 speed. I mean, we already outspeed, so Agility doesn't really do anything for us here. We just have to hope to get the ranges with Comet Punch. Let's go. So Faulkner round one. Here against this Pidgey, we just go Comet Punch. We need to actually knock this Pidgey out though. Okay, so we knock it out. Pidgeotto comes out. We miss Comet Punch. We heal. It looks like we can get three hits on him and we ran out of PP and Comet Punch. So we need to go heal up and then we need to not miss Comet Punch there. That is the game plan now. Okay, let's go. Faulkner, round two. Punch him. Punch his bird. Yes. Okay, so we beat, beat up the Pidgey. Pidgeotto comes out. We actually land the first Comet Punch. Oh, it's a speed tie. Wait a second. Are we speed tied here? Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay, there is a use for agility. Rip, we need to make sure that we outspeed at all times. Agility, yes. I have become highly agile. There we go. We knock out the Pidgey in two hits. Pidgeotto, you will not outspeed me this time. We get healed. Okay. And now we just need to get the ranges and not miss. Okay, so that was kind of a standard range there. Hey, that was a five hitter. Come on, hit. Yes, we get to level nine. Hitmonchan has beaten Faulkner. That's two of two so far. That's nice. But that was pain. That was painful. And when you look at the level up moveset of Hitmonchan, it does not immediately just get upgraded moves in this next section. It doesn't get Fire Punch till I think level 25. Yeah. So it will learn Pursuit at level 13. 
giving it at least some coverage that will be a move maybe we can use against uh something like a, a ghastly but yeah we don't have like a move set that's like oh we've got auto wins against uh whitney and and price and jasmine that's not what i see when i see this move set i see like oh we're gonna have to fight for everything this could be bad this could be very bad <laughs> but let's just find out so we're gonna save the game it's time to move on to him on top all right so let's try him on top this pokemon always struck me as just a little bit odd like they just wanted to add a new hitmon not for any particular reason they just were like oh yeah let's just make another hitmon pokemon that's just you know hitmon lee made sense hitmon chan made sense you got your boxer you've got your bruce lee impersonator but then hitmon top what is it supposed to be i mean a a, a top <laughs> but why why i mean it should just be the breakdowns pokemon clearly so here we're gonna pick up him on top and uh let's see how he does we are starting out with rolling kick okay that is a stronger kicking move than double kick that should actually give us a decent chance here wait just a second what are the stats like on this pokemon our stat spread is looking like okay we've got 15 attack 14 defense 8 special attack 16 special defense 12 speed and we are going to learn focus energy in this section which i believe is not bugged in gen 2 so i do believe it will actually boost our uh, critical hit rate i don't know guys this one might work this one just might work so let's get into this rival one fight and find out so we're gonna take off the berry going to save the game and now we're just gonna try to first attempt him with rolling kick let's go so here against Chikorita, rolling kick misses turn one good job <laughs> but there we go it does knock him out I mean, rolling kick and double kick are pretty close to the same thing in a lot of ways. It's just that rolling kick only takes one turn, whereas double kick takes multiple turns. It's basically it. We're just naming the rival all A's in this one. It's faster. So here, coming into Faulkner's gym, I'm going to give the berry to Hitmontop. Let's check the tail of the tape. Here, level six, we've got 23 HP. We know rolling kick. We've got 18 attack, 18 defense, 11 special attack, 20 special defense, 15 speed. 18 defense is higher than what we had with Hitmonchan. So we might be able to take two hits here from Honest Abe before we get knocked out. Let's find out. So here, yes, we are going to be able to survive two hits here. We missed the rolling kick, but we probably just need one critical hit here and we can get through this. Oh, but there's a range where he doesn't get us into yellow health and then we don't heal with the berry. Are you kidding me? Come on. Come on. But it is pretty clear we need at least one critical hit here because we're not doing enough damage otherwise in order to get through this Spiro. I don't think ranges are a factor here. I think this comes purely down to not... Oh, <laughs> and then we get the critical hit. But yeah, it comes purely down to not having enough attack power to knock it out. But we do get through and we get to level seven and we learn focus energy, which will increase our critical hit rates. So here, let's save the game and fight the God Rod. Don't think he's going to be trouble in this one. Just a prediction. Oh yeah, look at these Pidgeys get completely destroyed. Two hits, but no problem at all. We're up to level eight now and I'm going to go heal up because I don't want to run out of PP here. Nobody likes a, a Pokemon with no PP. Oh man. So coming into Faulkner, the tail of the tape, we've got a level eight Hitmon top, 28 HP. That hasn't changed for all the Hitmons. We've no rolling kick and focus energy. We've got 22 attack, 22 defense, 13 special attack, 25 special defense, only 18 speed. We're going to be outsped, I believe, by the final Pidgeotto. But let's get into this fight. Let's see if maybe Focus Energy does it for us. Let's go. All right, so turn one, I'm going to actually set up Focus Energy. We get pumped. Yes. And we flinch the Pidgey. Yes. Now, Gus does a lot of damage. We're going to heal up here. We need a crit. And we miss. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Come on. After we Focus Energy to boost our crit chance. We just can't get the crit. Oh, this is stupid. Somebody's going to tell me, like, no, Focus Energy was still bugged in Gen 2. Oh, if we were faster, this would be so much easier. But we just, yeah, we have yet to get a single critical hit. How is this possible? How is this even possible? 
I mean, am I losing my mind? Did they not fix focus energy in Gen 2? Is this actually a thing? That we're getting destroyed by Faulkner because we can't critical hit? What is this? Still no critical hit on Pidgeotto. With focus energy. Let's just double check the description, right? It raises the critical hit ratio. Let me just double check. Is this still bugged in Gen 2? Because that's going to drive me nuts. Oh, this is just stupid. We still have not landed the crit. That's all we need. Just one critical hit. One critical hit. Come on, him on top. I believe in you. Kind of. Like, barely. <laughs> I barely believe in you. Oh, man. Him on top. The worst him on by far. He just refuses to critical hit. Otherwise, we would get through this. You could get a run where you just got the crit turn one on that Pidgeotto. And then you're kind of golden. Then you feel like, oh, yeah, this is fine. This is perfectly fine. As long as you don't miss the next turn and then die. Because that would be painful, too. To get the crit and then to just immediately die. Oh, there's the critical hit. There we go. Finally hit him on top. Took you 14 minutes to do it. We finally managed to beat Faulkner. We level up to level nine. That was pain. That was worse than either of the other two Hitmons. By a large margin. <laughs> By a large margin. So, uh, yeah, Hitmon top. He gets through. He's level nine. He's got 31 HP going into the next section. Rolling kick focus energy. 25 in attack and defense. 14 special attack. 27 special defense. 20 speed. We will learn Mud Slap. We will learn Swift. So we're going to get two new moves at the very least in this next section. We'll even learn Dig later on. So, I mean, there is some coverage on this move set. Not great, great coverage, but it does exist. But I mean, the real question is how we'll do. We're going to get Pursuit, Quick Attack, Rapid Spin, Counter, Agility, Detect, and Triple Kick. And uh, yeah... That's not a great level of learn set, if you ask me. We're mostly going to rely on TMs to get through this one. This is going to be rough, but hey, we did it for now. We got through Faulkner with him on top. Time to move on. There's one last fighting type Pokemon. It's going to be by far the worst. We're going to try Tyrogue here. I think Tyrogue's getting wrecked. So right now is the time to place your bets. Do we even get to Faulkner? I don't think so. I think we're getting wrecked by Honest Abe in this one. I think that Tyrogue is just going to get completely destroyed. That's my guess. It's going to be like the first or I guess second baby Pokemon to fail with Togepi. Just my prediction, though. So here we will get our Tyrogue. Let's just see the starting learn set is Tackle. Yeah, <laughs> this is going to be bad, 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 bad. I know people love to do full game solo runs with these baby Pokemon too. Tyrogue, not going to make it happen. I don't believe. I have no faith. Oh, and what is this? We have no level up learn set. We only get tackle. Wow, and it really doesn't learn any good TMs either. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, that's terrible, terrible. So basically, the moral of the story without even fighting rival one is that even if we did manage to somehow get through, we weren't going to get any moves anyway. Oh, this might just be impossible, guys. Anywhere close to minimum battles. Uh, I'm going to leave the berry on. <laughs> I have no faith in this Pokemon. Let's fight rival one. And he growls me turn one. Are you kidding me? So now our tackle's doing like no damage. And his Chikorita's doing so much to us. Oh, Tyrogue. You were supposed to be the one. <laughs> rival one gives us our first L of this entire session. I mean, the Hitmons before this all completely destroyed this Pokemon. But here we're not even doing damage when we didn't get Growl. Are you kidding me? Any critical hits me? Oh, this Chikorita. We survived with one HP after using the berry. That was terrible, terrible. That guy is a beast. Beast, I say. Man, rival one. That is way too hard. So youngster Mikey might actually be a fight to commentate here, given that this is going to be a three hitter on the Pidgey. Oh, this is bad, bad, guys. Rattata is doing decent damage here, and he beats us. <laughs> we lost to Youngster Mikey. Oh, God. I'm back to Rival 1. This is terrible. So here we are. We have made it to Faulkner's Gym. We're definitely going to give a berry here. We can always get one more berry in the Ruins of Alf, but let's start off by just seeing if we can even beat this uh, Honest Abe here. So Tyrogue's coming in at level 6. It's only got 22 HP. It's 1 HP less than the other Hitmons. 
We've got 35 PP and tackles, so that's all we're going to be able to do. We've just got 11s all the way across the board in stats. Oh, that is bad. That is bad. It's like having a Mew, but like a really, really terrible Mew. Uh, I don't think we get through this. I think we get at least two hit by this, this Spiro, even after using a berry. Let's just see. Let's confirm. So uh, yeah, there's the Spiro, level nine. Heck did <laughs> 19 damage. Oh, and after we heal up, we're just getting destroyed the second turn. And look how little damage we did to that Spiro. Guys, there's no question. There's no discussion, no debate. Tyrogue does not beat the game on minimum battles. We can eliminate Tyrogue right here. Thank God. I don't want to play this Pokemon anymore. <laughs> He's so bad. So let's update the list and check our stats so far today. So we can see our list has been updated and we are sitting at 109 Pokemon getting past Faulkner. We only added Tyrogue so far today to the fail column, so 57 have failed. Next up, we've got Lickitung, and we're going to face it up against Ursaring and Teddy Ursa. Of course, Teddy Ursa is unevolved, so we're basically going to look at Lickitung versus Ursaring and then just come back and do Teddy Ursa. But let's just see. I mean, Lickitung, I think it knows Lick in this generation, but Lick won't affect the flying types because they're also normal types. Oh, this could be rough. All right, so here we'll pick up our Lickitung in the Totodile Ball, and we're starting the game with Lick. Yeah, <laughs> so I better hope that we actually get another move before we get to Faulkner. Otherwise, this is going to be terrible. Let's just see. So we get Supersonic at level seven. All right, so we're going to take off the berry here and we're going to try rival one with Lick. This is the only fight in this section that Lick can actually affect the opponent. We get growled. Now we Lick and we paralyze him. Look how little damage Lick does, though. We have a lot of HP in defense, but... Oh, the fact that we got Growl's turn one. Oh, the, this is terrible. Okay, yeah. It's probably more consistent with the berry here. But we're going to try this again. Hopefully we just don't get Growl turn one this time. And he goes Growl turn one. I'm just going to reset there. Let's just see if we can get one without a Growl turn one. Come on. Come on. Oh, he misses the Growl. There we go. Now we paralyze him. Now we're doing more damage. Maybe we have a shot here. If he's just paralyzed enough turns come on be paralyzed be paralyzed there he is fully paralyzed and there we finally win so yeah we just need not to get growled but uh yeah the next fight against youngster mikey we actually can't affect him with lick it's it's actually impossible to to damage his pokemon so we're gonna have to go straight to struggle strats here there's really no other strategy in this whole section Oh, this is stupid, stupid. And I mean, don't get me wrong, there would be plenty of Pokemon to use up PP against, but the obvious one would be Jigglypuff, because Jigglypuff is available just up north over here, and Jigglypuff only knows, like, Sing and Defense Curl at best. I'm pretty sure it just knows Sing. So you could just use up a bunch of Lick PP, and then once it runs out of PP and Sing, you just run away and uh, go again. You know, where there's hop hips, there's things like that that you wouldn't necessarily knock out. But uh, here, yeah, we have to go straight to struggle strats. So we're going to do it. Put the asterisk on this one. You know, there's just really nothing to be done, guys. Like, I would totally go for something else, but what else? <laughs> there's nothing else in this section. Hopefully we'll get enough moves in the next section that we won't have to do anything terrible like this. All right, so I've used the powers of Gamehook to give myself zero PP and Lick so that we can just go into this next fight and just use Struggle. Let's struggle against Youngster Mikey. Here we go. Oh, no more moves. It's almost a one-hitter there. So we do knock out the Pidgey. Here, Rattata is looking to be a three-hitter maybe. So we do win there, nice. We get to level six. We still wouldn't be at the level that we need to get supersonic. It's not coming into level seven. So here, let's come into Faulkner's gym. Let's check the stats. We're level six, 28 HP. We've eliminated all the PP from Lick. We have 13 attack, 15 defense, 14 special attack, 15 special defense, 10 speed. But this all just comes down to hope the berry is enough and hope that we can do enough damage with struggle let's try honest day but let's see so here 
Heck does about six damage and it's looking like a six hit KO, maybe even. Okay, maybe one critical hit will get us through in a five hitter. We might be able to get through this with a critical hit. Let's just see if he gets no critical hits and we get critical hits. Come on, get one critical hit. Come on. I believe in you, Licky Licky. Oh, sorry, Licky Licky's in the later generation. <laughs> oh man, the fact that they named a Pokemon Licky Licky is hilarious to me. We just need like some incredible ranges and a crit. No, does not happen. I believe we can crit just normally with struggle, just like anything else. But uh, somebody's going to come in and be like, no, actually, they changed it in Gen 2 where struggle does a fixed amount of damage. I'll be like, I never knew this. Oh, man. We're getting like five hits on this guy, too. Oh, there's the critical hit that we needed. Yes. The critical hit that was promised and we heal up two more hits come on yes there we go we finally got through honest abe we get to level seven we learned supersonic that was terrible <laughs> let's just be honest that was terrible terrible and i'm not sure we even want supersonic here so i think what we're gonna do we're gonna go straight all in on struggle or we'll give ourselves like one supersonic because i just don't see any way that it works otherwise okay so let's save the game. Let's go up here into the God Rod. Let's just see. So we go supersonic. So we confuse this Pidgey. It hits itself. Nice. This is just about getting fewer turns of them hitting us. But we easily knock out that Pidgey. Cool. Here, this Pidgey is doing like three damage per hit. And we knock him out. Cool. We've got one HP remaining. We get to level eight. That's fine. We're going to give a berry here. Let's just pop a couple potions. And let's save the game. Let's check the tail of the tape here. Going into Faulkner. We're level eight now. We've got 35 HP. We're giving ourselves one supersonic just because. And then we've got 16 attack, 19 defense, 17 special attacks, 19 special defense, 12 speed. We're not going to outspeed anything. And our attack stat's not that great. Our defense stat is meh. Uh, this, this might be rough, guys. This might not be possible or it might be really rough. And I mean, there's just nothing else to do. You, you couldn't get through this with Lick, right? So this is the only strategy that could possibly work. Let's fight this guy, I guess. So here we'll just try to confuse his Pidgey. It didn't work. So now we're just going struggle strats the whole way down. This is a four hit KO on the Pidgey. We're already in range to use our berry. Gust is doing like six damage here and we are not doing that much damage. So we may need an insanely good confusion roll on this Pidgey and then to just get the luck that we need to get through the Pidgeotto. He's still confused. Yes. Okay. So we only took a couple hits there. We're still in green health, still in green health, and we get a critical hit on the Pidgeotto. Nice. We heal there. He's still doing about six damage per hit. And we're going to knock ourselves and him out. And we auto lose whenever we we tie. Oh, that's stupid. Come on. We needed one more time of Pidgey hitting itself in confusion. OK, so there we confuse Pidgey. No, hit yourself. Come on. There we go. Yes, he hits himself again. Cool. OK, six damage there. Six damage there. We use the berry. Come on. We need a crit like like nobody's business oh there we go we get through with one hp remaining <laughs> oh my god lick a tongue oh you're terrible you're terrible you pokemon but we do have a lick to hit ghosts so there is that and uh what else will we learn in this next section let's just see we get defense curl at level 13 stomp at level 19 i don't think we get to stomp before bugsy um 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 we also don't learn Swift. We do learn Mud Slap. So we will have Mud Slap for the next section. We will get all the elemental punches. We'll get Earthquake later on. I mean, there are some moves on this move set. I'm just not sure it's going to work out <laughs> because we're just not going to get anything in the next section. We'll even get Rollout later on. Defense Curl Rollout strats could come in uh, once we get to Whitney. Oh my God, Lickitung. You absolute legend, but you're also terrible. <laughs> oh 
holy katung going into the next section level 9 38 hp we don't even want to use its moves 18 attack 21 defense 18 special attack 21 special defense 13 speed now a lot of people have been commenting that struggle strats are not minimum battles i get you i agree with you i'm simply saying that it is possible to get to struggle without getting more xp and that's the reason why we're testing it but yeah it definitely put a huge asterisk up there next to Lickitung. It does get through, but that was terrible. That was terrible, terrible. All right, let's see how Ursaring does. I'm sure Ursaring is going to be like a thousand times better. So I do want to say, I think Ursaring and Teddy Ursa were great additions to the Pokemon list, the Pokedex, because there were no bears in Gen 1. I mean, you could say Snorlax was a sleepy bear, but it's not really a bear. Come on. We need a bear Pokemon, Teddy Ursa and Ursaring to the rescue. I mean, there were a lot of types of Pokemon that, you know, like types of animals that didn't have a Pokemon representation in Gen 1. Oh, look at this thing. He looks like an angry smoky bear. <laughs> Just give him a hat. <laughs> we are starting this one with Scratch, Leer, Lick and Fury Swipes. Lick means we will have something to hit Rival 2's Ghosts, but we don't have to rely on Lick here. Fury Swipes, 80% accurate, can hit up to five times with the 18 base power, and it is the same type move. And uh, Scratch, 40 base power. I mean, this, this could be way better, <laughs> way, way better. All right, so we're going to take the berry off here as we go into the rival one fight, because I don't think we need it. But let's see if we can just beat him on the first attempt, get some redemption here. Let's go. So we're just going to... Uh, how about we go Fury Swipes? Because if we hit three times, it's already stronger than than Scratch. And there we go. Two turns to knock him out. Never in question. Easy, easy win. And uh, let's check the stats as we come in. We are level six. We've got 28 HP. Oh, I just like that bear animation. There we go. We've got Scratch, Leer, Lick, and Fury Swipes coming in with 22 attack, 15 defense, 15 special attack, 15 special defense, 13 speed. We're not going to outspeed anything. I don't think it matters. Let's go into the Honest Abe fight. So here, I think the best strategy is to go Fury Swipes. Just because it can hit up to five times. And uh, here, yeah, we didn't even activate the very... And we get to level seven. That is perfect. We're just going to slam this potion. You know, slam those potions, guys. And uh, let's come fight the God Rod. So here against the God Rod, I mean, Fury Swipes is only 80% accurate, but... As long as it hits, it will do more than enough damage, I think. And yeah, <laughs> we get through that easily. We get to level eight, slap on another potion. Still got our original berry. And we're at level eight love with 35 HP. This is basically the same as we were with Lickitung. The difference is we actually have moves. Yes, moves. I should be like Kangastan, moves. <laughs> If you haven't watched Kangastan's video, go check that out. That guy is a brilliant. But we're coming into Faulkner with 28 attack, 19 in defense and both specials, 16 speed. We'll outspeed the Pidgey, not the Pidgeotto, but we got this. Let's go. Let's go, Faulkner. I'm here for you. So here, I'm going to lead off with Fury Swipes. Oh, we just didn't get the range. I'll do Scratch just to guarantee the KO there. Now on Pidgeotto, let's go Fury Swipes and miss. Oh, come on. Oh, but a five hit Fury Swipes knocks out the Pidgeotto in one turn. Oh, there we go. We level up. Look at those stats. The attack stat 31, 20 and everything else except the speed is 18. Oh, Ursaring, you absolute legendary Pokemon. This Pokemon, God tier, just completely crushed this section. This is great. Going into the next section, let's see. We're going to get Swift, which is a stronger same type move. We can put that over... Uh, something like Scratch and be perfectly fine. We will also get access to Mud Slap, so we could slap that on over something. <laughs> we'll decide what to put. We're going to get things like Fury Cutter. We're going to get things like the Elemental Punches. By a level up, let's see. We're going to get Faint Attack at level 22 Rest. We're going to learn Slash. That will be very nice as we level up there. Snore, Thrash. I mean, decent moves by a level up, but that TM learn set is looking nice, very nice. I'm excited for that. And I think we're gonna be able to destroy a lot of things as we go through the game. We even learned Dig, Earthquake, 
Yeah, I don't see too much trouble coming for this Pokemon for a while. Let's find out though. First ring for now, perfectly good against Faulkner. Now let's see if little Teddy can do what, what Big Daddy Bear did. All right, so here we are with Teddy. Teddy Ursa. Oh, and we get a Snorlax at the beginning, the Sleepy Bear. The bears are in town, guys. Oh, this is stupid. We know Scratch and Leer. Let's get into this action with Teddy. Teddy Ursa. We're here for this action. So here, let's get down. Let's fight our rival. This guy, he has no shot. We're going to completely destroy him with our Teddy Bear. This is this is Ted, guys. He ain't Teddy. He's Ted. We're going to take off this berry, too. Let's just take that. Let's save the game. Let's fight. So here, I think the strategy, I'm going to go for one Leer and then go for the Scratches because he growls at me first. So yeah, he misses the tackle. Oh, look at the damage. Look at the damage. Yeah. Yeah, not such a fluffy teddy bear now, am I? <laughs> oh, get wrecked, the rival. We're just naming them all A's in this one because it's faster because I can just hold down the auto A button. Nobody cares about the rival in Gen 2 anyway. He's trash, garbage. That's the one thing that's missing from Game Hook, though, is an actual memory address for where they named the rival. In Gen 1, in the Gen 1 mapper in Game Hook, you can just set it. Can't seem to find that setting, at least in this mapper in Gen 2. Need to get that fixed. Might be in the newest update. I haven't downloaded it yet. All right, so here in Faulkner's Gym, I will give a berry just because we're slightly under leveled here. We're coming in at level six with Teddy Ursa, 26 HP. We know Scratch and Leer, of course. We've got the berry. We've got 16 attack, 12 in defense and both specials, 11 in speed. But now it's time to find out if Teddy Roosevelt here can uh, take down Honest Abe and prove he's the better Republican president. <laughs> so here, I'm going to try to just scratch him. Let's see, we're doing decent damage here. We heal up. He's doing about eight damage per hit. So we get through on the first attempt. Thanks to the berry, no problem. We get to level seven. We're just going to slam a potion here, a potion and a half even. Let's just save the game and fight the God Rod. Ooh, we get a reset on the God Rod. Okay, we need the berry here. With the berry, that should have been a win. So let's try a second time here. It's just because he's doing about five damage per hit. And we just took too many hits. It's like a three hit KO on each of these Pidgeys. We're going to heal up to 19 HP here, which should be enough. And there we go. So we do get through on the second attempt. And we learned Lick. Not that it matters. Not that we wanted that move. But we got that move. So here we're going to just heal up again and uh, save the game and let's get into Faulkner. But first, let's just check the stats. We are now at level eight. We've got 30 HP. We know Scratch, Leer and Lick at this point. We've got 20 attack, 15 in defense and both specials, 14 speed. I think it's enough. I think it's enough. I think we beat Faulkner. Let's go. Let's find out. So first things first, we're going all in on attack. The first attempt, this is going to be a three hitter on the Pidgey. We've got 20 HP going into Pidgeotto. Gust did eight damage. So now we heal up to 22 HP, but yeah. Oh, we survived with one HP. Oh, we survived with one HP. We could just hold down A. Okay, the, the Pidgeotto is doing between seven and eight damage every time it hits us with Gust. We got two seven rolls in a row. Oh, that was stupid. Oh, Teddy Ursa, you legend. Oh, what a great Pokemon. What a cute little great Pokemon, Teddy Ursa. And now we've leveled up to level nine. We're going to get basically, I think, the same moves as Ursa Ring. We have a shot. We have a shot to progress with Teddy Ursa for a minute. For a hot minute, guys. That was beautiful. All right. So that's three more Pokemon added to the win column. Let's go ahead and get them in. Keep in mind, these are max DVs, though. A lower DVs. Teddy Ursa is probably not getting through this section, but with max DVs, it works. It just works, guys. So getting back to our list, we can see that 112 Pokemon have now beaten Faulkner. Only 57 have failed. And now we're going to get into the part of this list that is probably a little bit more questionable. I mean, the fighting types, other than Tyroak, it kind of makes sense that they got through, even though they're They've got type resistances. Fighting is at least neutrally effective up against Faulkner. So as long as they have enough defense to survive a couple hits, they can get through those fights. But we haven't taken the Pokemon that really are going to struggle. 
I think coughing and wheezing might be the first ones that just make this one look terrible. We might be at, about to add a bunch of L's here. Let's try wheezing first just to see if we can even get through this section. So obviously the issue with wheezing is going to be it's poison typing is going to cause Faulkner's Pidgey to just use Mud Slap over and over and over again. And Mud Slap could just completely destroy this Pokemon, especially if we don't start with any strong moves. I don't think we're going to start off with something like Sludge, so we're probably going to have like Smog, maybe Tackle is my guess. But I don't know the move set. Let's find out. This is one Pokemon that I did not put in the Totodile Ball. I put it in the Cyndaquil Ball because having a Poison type up against Chikorita would be too OP. So here we go. Let's get this Pokemon. Oh no, we named it. Rip. Gonna change that real quick. Didn't mean to name this one. Nobody needs to name their Pokemon. What is this nonsense? Here we go. We fixed our name. And uh, yeah, let's just get this going here. And let's see, our starting moveset is... Poison Gas, Tackle, Smog, and Self-Destruct. Obviously, Self-Destruct is worthless for us. So we are going to have to use Poison Gas, Tackle, and Smog. Great. Great. This sounds wonderful. Doesn't it sound wonderful, guys? Especially given that a couple of those moves have, like, no accuracy. Oh, the 55% accuracy is going to kill me. I think we have good defense. So defensively, we shouldn't have any major problems. But yeah... This could be rough. This could be rough. Okay, so I'm going to take off the berry for this rival one fight. I don't think we need it with Weezing, but let's see. I'm going to try to poison this guy first because poison, I think, will do decent enough damage and then we'll go into tackle. think that's the way to go. Yes, so we do poison the Totodile. Very nice. Now we can tackle it and it's going to take the extra chip damage. So even when we miss the tackle, it's still getting damaged here. And that should be enough right there. Yes, we get through without the berry. No problem. But it wasn't as big of a win as I would have hoped. I mean, this is a Team Rocket Pokemon. So typically the Team Rocket Pokemon, not very good. So here we've come into Faulkner's Gym. Of course, we're going to give the berry now. We need it. We're coming in at level six because we're in the medium fast level up group. We've got 25 HP. We know Poison Gas, Tackle, Smog, and Self-Destruct. We're just going to have to forget Self-Destruct as soon as possible because it's going to do nothing for us in this run. And then we have 17 Attack, 21 Defense, 17 Special Attack, 15 Special Defense, 14 in Speed. I mean, the Defense might carry us. We just have to see. Let's fight Honest Abe and find out. So here, I think the clear strategy is to start off with Poison Gas. And I think we wanted to land the Poison Gas turn one. The fact we haven't learned landed poison gas i think makes this a reset it is 55 percent accurate it should hit just over half the time there we go we get the poison gas this time now i think we go for tackle it's stronger than smog we'd only really want to use smog if an opponent was weak to it and here we go we do take down that spiro so now we can heal up let's come here and fight the god rod let's just see if tackle will just do it here can we just tackle these pigeons down we're definitely doing more damage than they're doing so yeah, this should be fine just with tackle strats. No need to even go for the smog here. But we can also see that these are multi-hit KOs. So we get to level 8 there. That is a damage rounding threshold that should make our ranges a little bit better on Faulkner himself. But this is still probably going to be bad. We're going to take a lot of mud slaps here. So let's just check the tail of the tape as we come in. We are at level 8. We've got 31 HP. We know Poison Gas, Tackle, Smog, Self-Destruct. We've got 22 Attack, 26 Defense, 21 Special Attack, 18 Special Defense, 17 in Speed. We will outspeed the Pidgey, but I'm not sure it's going to matter. So I think turn 1 what we do is we go for Poison Gas. So we do Poison the Pidgey. So even if we get lowered accuracy, it will still take damage. And now we're just hoping to knock it out. Okay, so it gets knocked out right there. Now I think we really want to poison this Pidgeotto. I don't see any way through if we don't poison it. And I know our accuracy is shot, so we're basically never going to land poison gas, but we just need to get lucky enough to land poison gas here because I think that's going to be the key with the accuracy drop here. But now we're not landing the tackles. And now we've already used the berry. I think that's GG right there. The other possibility is to go for Smog, because Smog will do damage and have the chance to poison. So if we get like a Smog with a poison, 
at the very beginning. But I mean, that would have to be a turn one smog with poison. Okay, we get a critical hit smog that poisons the Pidgey. We land tackle turn two and he goes down. Okay, so we got fewer accuracy drops there. Okay, we land smog there, critical hit and poisons Pidgeotto. Now we need tackles to hit. We've got 20 HP remaining. Come on, land a tackle, come on. Oh, but poison does it, yes. With two HP remaining, we managed to beat Faulkner. Oh, that was terrible with wheezing. Oh, that was bad, bad, bad. Your cherished bird gets wrecked by poison. We had to go smog strats. Smog critical hit on both of his Pokemon was what it took to get through. I think we can already say that Coughing's not getting through this fight. There's just no way that Coughing beats Faulkner here. Just no way that that works. Weezing joins the winners list and it's time for coughing. So I'm not very confident in coughing going into this for two reasons. Number one, because I'm pretty sure it's just gonna start off with um, poison gas and tackle. Maybe it will have smog, but even if it does, that's not gonna be great. In fact, it won't have smog. It's gonna learn smog at level nine. So we're not even gonna get there until we've already beaten Faulkner. We needed smog in that last one so that we could actually deal damage at the same time as we were getting the poison. So yeah, we're getting just poison gas and tackle. And we saw even a max DV's wheezing that was so terribly close. And in fact, in most cases, I would argue that the, we should probably just eliminate it because it took two critical hits there. Plus it took landing the smog with the poison on the Pidgeotto, like after we had already been hit multiple times by a... Uh, by Mudslab. Like that was so insanely lucky to get that run with Weezing. And the fact that it didn't take that many attempts is just stupid. Like, don't get me wrong, we had lots of turns, but if we don't get that critical hit on Pidgey, we're taking even more accuracy drops. And then on the Pidgeotto, if we don't land that critical hit, we would have had to get completely perfect luck with the tackles in order to get through. So it's not impossible, clearly. It works, but anything less than max DVs, wheezing was not getting through. So that makes me think coughing probably just doesn't stand a chance, but let's try. Let's fight our rival. Let's go. We're going to leave the berry on for this one, though. So here I am going to go poison gas first. Oh, come on. There we go. We gas him up. Nice. Now let's just go ahead and start tackling. He's doing decent damage to us. And I mean, if we don't get the poison turn one, it's basically game over. So there we go. We beat the rival, at least, with coughing. I think we'll beat the youngster. We might even get all the way back to Faulkner. I just don't think we're going to beat Faulkner with this one. Okay, so we get through right there. We can come over here, tell that guy to leave me alone. Nobody wants to learn about how to catch Pokemon Gen 2. We know this is the second generation. We don't need catch tutorials. Tell kids to go back and play Gen 1 if they want to know how to catch Pokemon. Coming here into Faulkner's Gym, we're at level 6, we've got 22 HP, we know Poison Gas and Tackle, we've got 14 Attack, 18 Defense, 14 Special Attack, 12 Special Defense, 11 Speed, we're gonna give the berry, but I think it's questionable if we even get through on a stable. We'll try both ways, we'll try All Out Attack, then we'll try with Poison Gas. Let's just see. So first, he's doing about 6 damage per hit. It's pretty clear Tackle is not gonna get us through this. We're gonna get 2 more hits on him which is nowhere near enough, and we get wrecked. So we need to go for poison gas if we're gonna have a shot here, and it's gotta be a turn one poison gas. If it misses, reset, just reset. You, you gotta get the turn one, right? So here we do land the turn one poison gas, very nice. It's gonna add up to a lot of chip damage as we go through this. We're gonna heal up to 15 HP. Oh, and he gets a critical hit on me. We might've had a shot without the crit, Let's try again. Try, try again. So here we gotta poison gas him first one. Oh, come on. Spiro's got a gas mask on. He's like, I don't take poison gas. I give the poison gas. His gassy Spiro. Okay, so here we're gonna get like one more hit on him. And it does work. We get through with two HP remaining when we use the berry. Here I'm going to potion up. Let's go ahead and save the game. Let's try Faulkner. We gotta poison him turn one. I'm just convinced of this. We're even slower than the Pidgey. 
Oh no, it's a speed tie. And it's not that he's doing a lot of damage. He's only doing three damage per hit. It's the fact that we also have to land poison gas here. And then we're getting six damage per hit from Pidgeotto. So yes, we landed poison gas, but guys, that is not happening. I'm sorry, but here we're coming into Faulkner with only 27 HP, only poison gas and tackle. We've only got 18 attack, 22 defense, 17 special attack, 14 special defense, 13 speed. I mean, we could get lucky, I guess, and like win the speed tie turn one against this Pidgey and get it poisoned turn one. But even then, like, there's just no way we're, we're not getting through that. Not without just the most insane luck that you've ever seen in your life. Here, we're not even winning the speed tie. The game's just like, come on, a ball of floating gas is not supposed to be able to beat a pigeon. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, guys, I think that's all she wrote for this one. G to the G. I I'm calling it right there. We're not getting through this fight. My overlay is kind of bugged over there, isn't it? That minus is popping up weirdly at the top of the stats. Gonna have to look into that. Anyway, coughing, no way. This this fight does not work. There's just no way it works. This is a max DV's coughing too. Like there, there's just nothing to do. So we're gonna eliminate coughing, which means we've got our second Pokemon eliminated. Let's just look at the results so far. So we've added one more to the loss column in coughing. So we're up to 58 Pokemon failing. We added one more to the win column. So 113 getting through. Now we've got to move on to the Rhyhorn line. And this one, I mean, it could be all right. Could be all right. It just depends. I mean, Horn Attack should do decent damage. That's really the saving grace of the Rhyhorn line. We're going to start with Rhydon. I assume it's going to get through. I hope it's going to get through. And then we're just going to have to see how we do after that. So we did put Rhydon into the Toto Dial Ball. We'll go up against the Chikorita line. But starting off, our Rhydon knows Horn Attack, Tail Whip, Stomp, and Fury Attack. Stomp and Horn Attack have the same power. Fury Attack with five hits is technically stronger, but I think we just stomp things. I mean, we can flinch opponents if we're faster, but even without being faster, we're just gonna do decent damage. This Pokemon has such a high attack stat, this should be easy. All right, so as we go into Rival 1, of course, this Rival doesn't know any moves that are any good against Rhydon, so we're just gonna take off the berry, get into the fight, and this one should be as simple as just holding down A on Horn Attack. I don't see any reason to change. So Horn Attack, oh yeah, look at the damage. It's gonna be a three hit KO there, easy win. He does nothing back to us, so we're gonna win that 100% of the time. Now, when we get to the next section, yeah i mean once the rival actually has grass type moves we're gonna get completely destroyed that's my prediction so here mikey should be just a joke and he is <laughs> he is just a joke here complete destruction nice we get to level six we are in the slow level up group here so we're gonna gain levels even slower we're gonna get to Faulkner, i think at level seven if i recall correctly that's gonna be pretty bad but Maybe we still have a shot. All right, so coming into Faulkner's gym, let's just check the stats. We're coming in at level six. We've got 30 HP on this ride on. Horn attack, tail whip, stomp, fury attack. We've got 22 attack, 21 defense, 12 in both specials, 11 in speed. But I don't think we even need a berry for Honest Abe because he's not the problem. He's not gonna do any damage to this uh, ride, on, ride on at all. He's doing two damage per hit and it's a three hit KO. I don't even think we need to save going into God Rod. We're just gonna hold down A and just destroy his Pokemon as well. Horn attack, horn attack, horn attack. Nice. We level up to level seven right there. We're just gonna continue with the horns. There we go. We've made it to Faulkner, but now we definitely need a berry and we need to check the stats. We are level seven. We've got 34 HP now. Stats are up to 25 attack, 24 defense, 13 in both specials, 12 speed. We're slower than even the first Pidgey. And we're going to be using Horn Attack and just praying to get accuracy luck. That's it. Let's go. Let's find out. So here, the Pidgey 
It's going to mud slap. It does three damage there. We missed the second horn attack. We hit the third horn attack. But I mean, it's just going to sit here and just spam that move. We level up to level eight right there. Pidgeotto comes out. Pidgeotto is also only going to mud slap here because of the fact that we are a rock type. So we resist gust, but we do knock him out on the first attempt. OK, so it's just a matter of getting accuracy luck. Now we're only at level eight here. We will learn Mud Slap, which is a same type move, which is pretty good. Uh, we can probably just learn that over Fury Attack. And then going into the next section, what we'll learn Fury Cutter after we beat Bugsy. I don't think we learned any rock type moves in this section, unfortunately, but at least Mud Slap will help when we get to the Slowpoke Well and gives us a way to easily knock out Rival 2's Ghastly. So that will be fine. But as far as level up moves, we're not going to get another level up move until level 31 where we learn Scary Face. And we don't get Earthquake until level 65. We're probably just going to get that via TM if we ever get to that point. We will learn Rollout after Bugsy going into Whitney. So yet again, we will have a same type move that is pretty darn good. But uh, yeah, we're just going to have to see. We, we're just going to have to experiment with all these different moves and find out if we can finally get through or not. <laughs> okay, so here, let's save the game. Let's see if Rhyhorn can do what Rhydon has done. So I am going to predict that Rhyhorn can get through this just because that was so easy with Rhydon. And it all is just about accuracy luck. But we, I don't think it's Stomp at the beginning. I think we're going to start with only Horn Attack and Tail Whip. But Horn Attack and Stomp are the same power. So that doesn't really make any difference here. The only real difference is going to be just our stats. And the stats obviously are going to be lower on Rhyhorn, but still decent. So I think it will be okay. Think is the operative word here. So sure enough, yes, we're starting with just Horn Attack and of course Tail Whip. And we're going to get tons and tons, tons and tons and tons of Mud Slap. So when we get to Faulkner, getting two Faulkner should not be a problem for this Pokemon, though. We're still defensive. We're still Rock type. So the only real issue is the mud slaps. So with that fight out of the way, we can come into Faulkner's gym. We're coming in with a level six Rhyhorn, 27 HP, horn attack and tail whip, 17 attack, 18 defense, 10 in both specials, nine in speed. But I don't think there's anything to talk about till we get to Faulkner himself, because Honest Dave here, he's not going to do any damage to us. See how many horn attacks it actually takes. One, two, three, ha ha. <laughs> let's come and fight Godrod, who also should be a cakewalk and yeah he's a joke so now it's just Faulkner himself that's all we need to test we're gonna give the berry right here we're at level seven coming into this fight which is not as great as a lot of other Pokemon it's the slow level up group always loses us a level at least right here and uh, we've got 30 HP, same move set, but now we've got 19 attack, 20 defense, 11 in both specials, and 10 in speed. So we just have to get the luck to hit through all the or all the mud slaps. Let's see how it goes. So Faulkner attempt one, we're just gonna hold down A on horn attack. We hit the first one, miss the second one. He's doing three damage per hit here. We actually get into berry range. Oh, but we leveled up, so. Now it's five damage per hit from this Pidgeotto, though. We need to land hits desperately, and we're failing on the first attempt. We just didn't get it. It looks like a four hitter there on Pidgeotto. Let's try again. Try, try, try again. Okay, there's two in a row. Oh, we missed number three. Okay, so we've got 21 HP going to Pidgeotto now. So we get in berry range after the first turn. We land the hit there. Okay, we just need one more hit. Yes, there we go. So Rhyhorn does succeed. It does manage to beat Faulkner on minimum battles. It's better than Geodude, better than Onyx. We can say that definitively. I mean, I think it has better stats than both of those Pokemon, and it definitely has a better starting move in the form of Horn Attack. But uh, yeah, this is another Pokemon that we're just going to have to see how it goes in the next section. Obviously, rollout's going to be a big deal. Mud Slap is a same type move. We'll get Dig Earthquake. Um, we can learn moves like Blizzard later on. We do not get Fury Cutter, so we won't get that as an option. That's only for the ride on. Iron Tail is a possibility later on if we want it. But yeah, 
We're just going to have to see how this goes, basically. I'm not super duper confident, but we're just going to have to use everything at our disposal and hope that it turns out to be enough. So that's two more Pokemon added to the win column. Let's just check how we're doing right now. So with that being done, we've only got three Pokemon left in today's episode, but 115 have gotten through Faulkner. Now I will make a quick prediction as we get through this and we're getting to the tail end of this, we're definitely going to be way over 50% of Pokemon beating Faulkner on minimum battles. That's pretty obvious, which means he's a lot easier than Brock in Gen 1. But the other thing that I think we can see just looking ahead is that Rival 2 and Bugsy will absolutely eliminate some of the Pokemon that have gotten through so far. That was not the case in Gen 1. Basically, everything that beat Brock beat Misty and Rival 2 on minimum battles. So this is one place where I do think that they got something a lot better in Crystal is that there is actually more of a progression as you go through the game, that the first gym is quite easy and then future gyms get harder and harder and harder. I remember my first playthrough getting to Jasmine. I had gone with the Chikorita line. I had my Meganium, but I was just getting completely wrecked when I got to Jasmine because I just didn't have any good answers at that point for the Steel type. I obviously didn't know the strategy very well as well, but you know, I, I just didn't know how to get through Jasmine without just massive level grinding with my Meganium. Anyway, Let's just check how these last three Pokemon do. We've got Shuckle, Heracross, and Sneasel. Starting with Shuckle, this one's gonna be very weird. Very, very weird, but let's try this. All right, so where did we put Shuckle? We put Shuckle here, I believe. No, we did not. Oh, rip. We put Shuckle there, okay. <laughs> Shuckle, he's in the Cyndaquil ball, go. Let's see, Shuckle, this legendary bug rock Pokemon knows Constrict and Withdraw. And of course it has amazing defensive stats and nothing else, the, the quintessential shuckle. Uh, but let's just see if we can manage to get through or not. So people have been talking a lot about other Pokemon that I should do my like God tier series or like Poo series of Pokemon, basically where we make them the best or the worst. And uh, a lot of people have said, you should make a God tier shuckle. I'm all for it. But whenever we do the shuckle run, I've already decided the nickname is gonna be Ah Shucks. <laughs> so we need it to be like the most wholesome shuckle ever. That would be stupid and hilarious. And I think we need to do this very soon. How about a new year run to try to beat the game with a God tier shuckle? What move set should we give it? Tell me in the comments. I mean, what rollout could be good with this one? What's it going to learn? Rollout, it can learn sludge bomb. Dig, Mud Slap, Earthquake. So like Earthquake, Return, Defense Curl, Rollout. Seems like a pretty broken set. <laughs> I mean, it can learn Toxic. Oh God. Oh God. All right, so we're gonna just take the Berry off though. I don't think we need a Berry in order to beat Rival 1 because we're a Rock type with insane defense. So this is just gonna be stupid and slow is my guess. Here, let's just use Constrict over and over again. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, we're doing like one damage per hit and taking one damage per hit. But if we keep up at this rate, we will actually lose the fight. Wait a second, because we wouldn't be doing enough. Like we can slow him down. See, he has nine HP. We have seven HP. Constrict should lower speed. Maybe we can get a critical hit. Come on. Come on, Shuckle. Aw, shucks. Oh, we died. <laughs> we died with one HP remaining. Oh, that was stupid. Okay. I think we do need to give a berry. To give a berry, let's go. Come on, Shuckle. You've got this. I swear to God, you've got this. Who cares that he uh, used Leer? He's still doing one damage per hit. Oh no, now he's doing two damage per hit. Oh no, he's still doing one damage per hit. <laughs> Rip. And we have a berry. So once he gets us down below half health, we're just going to heal and be like, ha ha. You thought you could defeat me? What? I'm all the way back to full health. We don't have HP. We don't have speed. We don't have attack. We don't have special, but we sure do have an awful lot of defense. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at this. Oh, come on. 
So there we go. We beat rival number one. We get to level six. So we must be in the medium slow level of group or are we in the fast level of group? One of the two. We're going to gain some levels. That much is clear. Here, Professor Elm, he's just like, oh my God, what is that thing? What the heck even is that thing? Why would you play with that? Ah, oh, shucks. Ah, <laughs> oh, shucks. I'm shekel. I'm oh, sorry. I find that hilarious and stupid. Oh, man. And just to imagine this Pokemon using like Earthquake and things later on. Hilarious. So here, obviously, against Pidgey, we're just going to use Constrict over and over again. And hopefully do enough damage to eventually knock it out on minimum battles. This is all about minimum battles. And uh, we're we're here for it. We're here for all the minimum battles, the minimalist of battles. Oh, look at him using all the tail whips. He knows, he knows. He knows you have too much defense. This is unacceptable. He's using more tail whips, more tail whips. He's still doing one damage per hit. Okay, we just need him to like miss or just use a tail whip. Nice here, as long as we can land the hits first. Yes, there we go. We get to level seven. We we're probably fast level up. Is that is that right? What? What is this? Fast or at least medium slow? I forget. Okay, so here we're going to heal up. And of course, we're just neutrally affected by flying. So I think we give the berry and let's just check the stats really quickly. We're at level seven. We have 22 HP. We know constrict and withdraw. We've got eight attack, 39 defense, eight special attack, 39 special defense, and eight speed. Oh, this is stupid, stupid. Okay, um, on a stave time, I'm a little nervous, but let's just find out. So here, of course, the Spearow is just going to use Peck over and over again, and it is doing decent damage. So I'm going to go ahead and use a whole bunch of withdrawals first. We need to get it to not do damage. Oh, it gets a critical hit. And I don't think we have any way to get through here. Oh man, Constrict does so little damage. Like we're trying to get the, the speed drops too. Okay, let's try this again, okay? So clearly we need a couple of withdrawals because he's starting out doing three damage per hit. We don't want that. We want him doing two damage per hit at most. And now we want to drop his speed ideally. But I mean, are we even gonna knock him out in 10 hits? No way. No way. No way, no way. So here's where I think we need to test struggle strats because struggle is five times stronger than constrict. It's literally five times stronger. Yeah, <laughs> we're going struggle strats here. Otherwise, there's no way we get through that. We aren't doing enough damage, but struggle might be the one. Oh, that would be stupid, stupid. So we're going to give ourselves two withdrawals, just two. We don't need a ton. You know, but now let's save the game like this. Let's see if we can knock this one out now with struggle. Okay, so first things first, we're going to use withdraw twice so that we get him down to doing two damage per hit. And now we have no moves. So we use struggle and it's doing like three to four damage per hit. Oh, and he gets a critical hit on me. No, any crits again. Come on. What was this nonsense? We're just trying to get it so that we have as many turns as possible to struggle against him. So that's why we want him doing two damage per hit. There we use our berry. So we're taking three damage per turn and we're doing three damage per turn and we get knocked out. Oh, it's so close. Okay, maybe we need to not go for the, for the withdrawals. Maybe we just need to go all in on struggle. So let's just see. Yet again, is this possible? Oh God. So we're going all in on struggle against this Spiro. It's going to do three damage per hit against us. We're doing three damage per hit against it, but we're effectively taking four damage per turn because of the fact that we're also using struggle. Oh, this is bad. Oh, this is bad, bad. We knock ourselves out and we still would have needed one more hit. Oh, man. Oh, man, Shuckle. Aw, oh, shucks. You're not going to get this? Come on. <laughs> we need crits, I think. We need to crit. Okay, we get the heal there. But this is the difference between Gen 1 and Gen 2 is that he can never miss Peck here. In Gen 1, we could be like, oh yeah, we just need to reset until we get a Gen 1 miss. Not here. But I do think that there's a chance, a very off chance, if we got a couple of... a couple of critical hits, we might be able to get through this. But oh yeah, this is not happening. 
Wait, we get knocked out right there. That was with a critical hit from him, though. Let's just see. If one critical hit without getting a critical hit is enough, we will go for it. I will be here for that. Okay, we got a critical hit there. And a critical hit does not seem to change how much damage we take from recoil. Oh, it was so close. But look at that one critical hit. He's still alive with one HP. So, boys, you know my rule. If it's multiple critical hits that are required, we generally do not reset for those. So, unfortunately, Shuckle dead right here at the first first bird keeper. Honest Dave has kept us honest. Struggle strats were not the ones. Not the way. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Shuckle. Bye, buddy. <laughs> Sorry. Ah, oh, shucks. He doesn't make it through. So we're going to add Shuckle to the fail column. And next, let's get to Heracross. This is going to be rough. All right. So we've put Heracross in Chikorita's ball. Of course, we want to go up against the Cyndaquil line. But let's just see what we actually start with here. We start with Tackle and Leer. <laughs> oh, God. That is not a great set. We have decent attack, 18 attack. 13 defense, 9 special attacks, 15 special defense, 15 speed. We're reasonably fast. We've got good attack. We've got mad defense. This does not look promising. Oh, <laughs> we're going to get wrecked. So we're not going to gain enough levels to really put much of a dent in our stats. We're going to have to go into Honest Abe at level 6. And that means... Oh, we're just not going to have the stats to take him on, I don't think. Right, so we level up and we get access to Horn Attack. Horn Attack could help us a lot because it's nearly double the power of Tackle. That being said, this is a Pokemon that might really benefit a lot from the Gen 4 remakes. When they made Sprout Tower a required part of the game, you had to go through Sprout Tower in Gen 4, but not in Gen 2. Gen 2, it's completely optional. Basically, what that means is that Pokemon like this would be able to go to Sprout Tower, gain a bunch more levels, and then probably go into Faulkner's Gym and just wreck. But because this is Gen 2 and we only get to level 6 here, oh god. So let's check the tail of the tape. We've got Heracross. He's level 6. He's got 27 HP. Bug and Fighting, so we've got 4 times weakness to flying. We know Tackle, Leer, and Horn Attack. We have 21 attack, 15 defense, 11 special attack, 18 special defense, 17 speed. We're going to be outsped by the Spiro here. We're going to give a berry. We're going to save the game and pray. Let's go. So here we're going to go horn attack and peck just one shots. <laughs> oh, God. I thought Shuckle was bad. Oh, look at this. Let's just try this again. Oh, we get wrecked. Oh, we get wrecked. And this is one of those things, right, where it's always kind of interesting to look at. But if we did go to the Sprout Tower, just, just for the sake of argument, if we went here and we had to fight a couple of these trainers even, I'm not sure we need to even fight all of them, but we'll fight this Sage right here. Obviously, we would be completely fine taking on all of these Bell Sprouts. We get to level 7 right there. That gets our speed up to 19. We'd now be in a speed tie with the Spiro. Let's just gain one more level here, right? We can knock out that Bell Sprout. We can knock out that Bell Sprout. We can knock out that Bell Sprout, right? So now we would just progress. Um, here, this guy, he would be required, you know, and we're just not scared of Bell Sprout because it, it really just can't do anything. We get to level eight right there. We're now faster than the Spiro. So let's just see, faster than the Spiro, how much damage would we do at level 8 if we just attacked it? If we just hit it with Horn Attack, how would we do, right? We just took three optional battles there, but in Gen 4, those would be required battles, basically. I'm not sure all of them would be required. We might have some spinners that we could go past, but here, now coming back at a higher level, Horn Attack does about half. We survive and Horn Attack knocks it out. So with three optional battles, we would be able to beat this fight with a Heracross. It's not that far off of being able to win here. It's just about the speed and not being able to survive more than a hit. Here, Pidgey will obviously go down. 
this will be an absolute cakewalk fight. So here we would destroy Godrod with just a couple optional battles. And then let's get into Faulkner. Let's just see, can we beat Faulkner at this level? Level nine Heracross going in against his level seven Pidgey. Horn attack will just two shot here. Now he's gonna send out Pidgeotto. We horn attack it. Gus did a lot of damage. So we probably need at least a Baryon on this one. Oh, sorry. We need to actually put the berry on. Let's just do that. So we'll give a berry here, a level nine Heracross. Keep in mind, this is max DV's Heracross though. But here at level nine, we would come in. Horn attack is just gonna two shot there. Now we get to Pidgeotto. We horn attack it. It uses Gust, we heal. We horn attack again. Okay, Gust is enough to two shot us there. So we would need a critical hit at this point, basically. So this is just very interesting to me too. Like we'll come back probably in, when we do, I shouldn't say probably, we will come back when we do full game runs with these Pokemon. Of course, they will be on zero DVs at that point, but we will be testing exactly this when I do full game individual solo runs is okay. This Pokemon cannot beat Faulkner on minimum battles. We know that, but how many battles would it actually take to just make it reasonable? J just reasonable, not easy reasonable now on zero dvs obviously we would have lower stats across the board we'd probably have to finish the whole sprout tower in order to make this really reasonable and competitive but you know without over leveling too much oh and a critical hit just one shots this it's pretty clear that at this point we would be able to beat faulkner with a single critical hit you give me one critical hit against pidgeotto and we win okay but for this experiment here which is minimum battles we have to add heracross to the list of pokemon that just simply cannot beat faulkner on minimum battles there's no way no way at all going back and looking at our results so far we add heracross and shuckle to the fail list so today we've failed so far with three pokemon shuckle heracross and of course tyrog everything else has managed to beat Faulkner on minimum battles. The evolved Hitmons, uh, Teddy Ursa, Ursa Ring. Of course, Lickitung was very close. We got through with Weezing. Or sorry, Coughing also failed today. Rip. Where's Coughing? Where is Coughing? Oh, there he is. Yes, Coughing got wrecked. But right horde, right on. So we're going to finish out with Sneasel, and then we're just going to find out which Pokemon to do next time. I don't know much about this Pokemon. All I do know is that. I watched a false swipe gaming episode a long time ago where they said basically this Pokemon got nothing that it needed in order to be top tier. That's all I know. So it's probably not a top tier Pokemon, but is it good enough to get through Faulkner? That's the only real question. Okay, and I put Sneasel into the Chikorita ball, so we will go up against Cyndaquil later on. Figured what the heck, we've got Ice type, so that's the only one that really makes sense. Here we go. So we're starting this run with Scratch and Leer, pretty standard. But given that we're dark and ice, that means that we don't have any weaknesses in this section of the game, which is pretty nice. And uh, it does mean that fighting is going to be super scary later on because fighting could just destroy Sneasel. But, you know, looks like we have a decent attack stat to start off and we've got good speed. So maybe we'll have a shot here. All right, so let's save and try out our luck against Rival 1. I'm going to keep the berry on just in case. So here, Rival 1, we're just going to scratch him repeatedly. We're doing decent damage here, so I think this is fine. And yeah, it's a four hit KO. We get to level six off of that fight. So we're clearly either in the medium slow or fast level up group. We'll embed it's medium slow. All right, so getting to Faulkner's Gym, we're going to give a berry to our Sneasel. We have reached level seven, which means we've got 26 HP, same moveset, Scratch and Leer, and we've got 20 attack, 14 defense, 12 special attack, 17 special defense, 23 in speed. We're actually gonna outspeed everything in this gym. So the real question just becomes, can we do enough damage? That high attack stat, I think will actually get the job done. Let's find out though, Honest Abe time. So here against Honest Abe, I think there's nothing to do but just attack. Like, yes, we could go for Leer and try to deal some damage, but here he got a critical hit on us. 
I'm pretty sure if we don't get that crit, we're probably good to go. Let's just try this again here. So scratch, scratch. Yeah, we got two hits that time before we had to use the berry. He's doing a lot of damage, eight damage per hit, but we level up to level eight and we have beaten Honest Abe. So it's just a matter of not getting a critical hit there. Now I think we go here to the next fight against uh, the God Rod. We're about to learn Quick Attack, which could also be good. But here, let's just take this guy on. I don't think we need a berry. I think we just sit here and spam Scratch. He got a critical hit turn one. That was terrible. But we get to level nine. We learn Quick Attack. I mean, Quick Attack and Scratch are the same power, so we can just use either. But there we go. We are at level nine and we are all the way to Faulkner. We're going to just heal up here. I'm going to give a berry just to be safe. Let's save the game and let's check the stats. Sneasel coming in at level nine, 31 HP. We've added quick attack, but otherwise the move set's the same. But now we're all the way up to 25 attack. We've got 28 in speed. The 17 defense is kind of meh. The specials obviously don't matter here. Let's just see if we can beat Faulkner on the first attempt. Let's go. Let's go. Quick and easy one to finish this round off. Here we're going scratch, scratch. That's a three hitter on the Pidgey. Now we level up to level 10. That's even a damage rounding threshold. We can scratch the Pidgeotto. Gust is doing about six damage per hit. We use our berry and this is going to be a guaranteed win. No problem whatsoever. We get to level 11. We have completely crushed Valkner with Sneasel. So Sneasel, the last Pokemon of today, gets to join the winner's circle. That's pretty awesome. And by a level up, we're going to learn Screech, Feint Attack, Fury Swipes, Agility Slash, Beat Up. Didn't catch that last move, but we're going to get some moves. But we're also going to learn Ice Punch via TM. We can get that once we get to um, to Goldenrod. We can learn to surf. <laughs> Sneasel surfs, what? That's crazy. And uh, yeah, a lot of the other moves are pretty standard, but yeah, we're just gonna have to see if we can do enough damage. I'm really looking forward to getting Slash later on, and I'm definitely looking forward to getting some dark type moves. And we just have to go from there and hope that this one is strong enough. For now, we can learn Mud Slap, which will help in the next section as well. It will guarantee we have at least one move that can hit ghosts. So very nice. Sneasel, a champion. So let's check the final lot, which Pokemon get through, which ones don't, and let's decide which Pokemon to do next week. All right, so looking ahead, we've finished Fogner with, what, 176 Pokemon now. 116 have beaten Fogner on minimum battles, 60 have failed. A lot of these Pokemon make perfect sense for today. Pokemon that were either weak to Mudslap, Pokemon like Heracross that had a four times weakness to flying. And yeah, Tyrogue, it was just never going to get through. He only knows Tackle. Shuckle is probably the biggest surprise to me. I thought that Pokemon would actually succeed, but it just didn't have enough attack output. Even with Struggle, it just didn't work. Then we have to look ahead. Guys, we're getting so far into this that really, I mean, what? We've got about 75 Pokemon to go. It's maybe five episodes total. So next time we're going to do 15 of them. We've got Chansey, Tangela, Kangaskhan. We're going to get Horsey and Seedra and Goldeen and Seeking all from Kanto. Then for Johto, we're going to be doing the Slugma line. We're going to be doing the Swinub and Piloswine. We've got Corsola coming in, Remoraid, Octillery, and for the season, I figured we'd go up till Delibird. So that gets us up to 225 in the Johto decks. Of course, we've skipped a couple unknown. We've skipped some of the new evolutions. We're saving those for later, but uh, we're making progress, guys. After this, if we get these 15 done, we've only got 60 more to go. I could probably bust those out this weekend. Kidding me? So let's get this done. Let's get through Faulkner. And like I said, I will plan to do a future series in Gen 4 where we'll redo a lot of these Pokemon in the remakes. The reason I haven't done that yet is number one, let's finish this, you know, let's get through this series first. But number two is because when we get to that, we're gonna need new mappers and new Gamehook software. Fortunately, the beautiful people over at Gamehook, including Scott's Thoughts, have said that they are working on Gen 4 mappers as we speak. So there will be some opportunities to get there in the future. 
Now, with that being said, the last thing that I'll say to you guys is just Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. It's been crazy. I started this second channel back in July. Didn't tell anybody that I was doing it initially. Wanted to get a little, little bit of the Gen 2 action under my feet. I've definitely learned a lot so far. And uh, I'm looking forward to finishing this Dex and then finishing the remaining battles in the series. Bugsy is going to be insane. I think Whitney is actually going to be a massive wall for a lot of Pokemon. Then I'm seeing possibly Jasmine. There might be some Pokemon for whom it's Chuck. I don't think Prize is going to stop anything, but we could be surprised. Claire is going to be a nightmare for some of these Pokemon. I'm really interested to see which ones will actually get through the entire game on minimum battles. I have no idea, but I'm going to guess that at least a few of these Pokemon are going to show us that they're truly the best of the best when it comes to solo runs. That's what I'm looking forward to. Anyway, let's get it in 2024. I hope you all are happy, healthy, warm. If you have suggestions, ideas, run ideas that you would love to see on the channel, let me know. I'm here for you guys. Appreciate you. See you in the next one. Later.